So let us begin chapter four. We're going to talk about second order differential equations. Again, remember that eventually we're just going to go over each of these methods for our differential equations of second order. In the following weeks, we're going to go over each of these methods after identifying the second order differential equation and apply the method that works the best for that differential equation. Before going through this mechanics, mechanical method of solving a differential equation, we need some definitions and some theorems. Okay. Let us start. Second order differential equations. So we need some introduction. First of all, recall that initial value problem states that for an nth order differential equation, we have the following a n of x, an expression and function of x, nth derivative of y with respect to x plus an expression in x, the nth minus one derivative of y with respect to x plus dot 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 the rest of the terms the middle of the terms a sub one x the first derivative of y with respect to x plus a sub zero x times y equals to g of x remember that here you have y as a function of x x is pre variable and y depends on x that's why the coefficients of the derivatives and y are just expressions, functions of x. Then we have initial value problem. It means that we have some constraints. Our constraints are at x sub zero, my y is y sub zero. At x sub zero, my first derivative is equal to another value and the rest of them. And the nth minus one derivative of y at x sub zero is equal to y n minus one. All of these are numbers. These are constants. These are some values. Constants. So when we solve this differential equation, we get a general solution by using the constraints, we get a particular solution. Remember that we talked about a theorem about existence of a unique solution. Theorem, existence of a unique solution. Well, let a n of x, a n minus one of x, the coefficients that you have, a one x and a sub zero x and g of x are continuous on an interval. Continuous on an interval like i. Suppose the leading coefficient is not zero. A n x is not zero. Then we can find a unique solution for our differential equation. Then a solution 
like y of x of the initial value problem above, this is an initial value problem that we have, exist and it is unique. Very good. So this theorem assures that if the conditions are met, if we have continuous coefficients and the function on the right-hand side is a non-homogeneous differential equation, are all continuous on any level, we don't have to go through the whole real line, just on an interval. And the leading coefficient is not zero, then you can find a solution for this differential equation. And this theorem says, hey, that solution is unique. So we're not wasting our time by solving a differential equation, initial value problem that satisfies these conditions. We can definitely find that solution, unique solution. One example. I'm going to leave the theorem down here. This example says, consider the initial value problem as follow. Here you have three, the third derivative of y plus five, the second derivative of y minus the first derivative of y plus seven y equal to zero. And y at one is zero. The first derivative of y at one is zero. The second derivative of y at one is also zero. Can we find a solution for this differential equation? Is it possible? So first of all, let us take a look at this differential equation. This differential equation is third order. Guys, analyze this. It's a third order differential equation. And since you have zero on the right-hand side, it is a homogeneous third order differential equation. This is the third order homogeneous differential equation. So does it satisfy the theorem conditions? So the theorem says, well, first of all, the coefficients all must be continuous on an interval. So what are the coefficients? Here you have a sub three of x as three, a sub two of x as five, a sub one of x is negative one, and a sub zero of x is seven. These are all constant, constant, which are continuous. Zero is also constant. Very good. So we have continuous coefficients. A sub n a sub three is three, it's not zero. Well, this condition is met as well. So if we solve this differential equation, we definitely get a unique solution for this initial value problem. So let us take a look at this example. This example says, well, consider the following differential equation. In this differential equation, we have the second derivative of y minus 4y equals to 12x with the condition, with the constraint that y at 0 must be 4 and the first derivative of y at 0 must be 1. Does it satisfy this theorem? If we try to solve this, can I solve this? Can I get a unique solution for this differential equation? Let's check to see. Here we have a sub 2 of x 
which is the coefficient of the second derivative is one. A sub one of X, which is the coefficient of Y is just, let me see, is just zero. And A sub zero of X, which is the coefficient of Y, the coefficient of Y prime was equal to zero because we don't have any first derivative. The coefficient of Y is negative four. And g of x is equal to 12x. Note that here you have a second order non homogeneous differential equation. This is a second order non homogeneous differential equation. We found all of these coefficients, they are all constants. They are all continuous. What about this function? Of course, it's 12x. It's also continuous. All of these are continuous. So it satisfies the conditions. Only check to see if the leading coefficient is non-zero. Yes, of course, it is one and it's never zero. So the conditions are met. So the theorem assures us that we can find a solution and that solution is unique. So other than initial value problem, we have boundary value problem. So what's the difference between them? Let's write them down here. So for initial value problem, we have the following case. In the initial value problem, the given differential equation relates to a single x value. In this case, the differential equation is related to single x value. We are dealing with the conditions. So let us mention that the conditions or constraint conditions of differential equation is just related to single value. Like previous examples, y1 was 0, y prime at 1 was 0, the second derivative of y was equal to 0. But we have another thing that we call the boundary value problem for a boundary value problem, the initial condition or the conditions that you have, they are related to more than one X value. In this case, the conditions of the differential equation are related to more than one X value. Very good. Single X value, more than one X value. Give us an example. Okay. Let's take a look at this case. Example. Consider the second order differential equation, the second derivative of x plus 16x equal to zero with the given conditions x at zero is zero and x at pi over two is zero. So it says, hey, when you plug in zero for your free variable, that free variable might be y, might be t, your x becomes zero. But if I plug in pi over two, another value for the free variable, 
my x is zero. So we have more than one free value here. You could write it this way for simplicity to understand it better. The second derivative of y plus 16 y, y at zero is zero, y at pi over two is zero. It doesn't matter how you represent your differential equation. As long as your free variables take on different values and impose some conditions, we call it a boundary value problem. Very well, let us talk about a linear operator. 